Hey, Garrett Brill and Don Casey here tonight, and we're here to, uh, this is going to be both a tutorial and uh, a data collection video. Um, what we have in front of us is we have the Autel Evo 2 Dual right here, the one with the dual cameras, the thermal and the optical. And right behind it, we have the Autel Evo 2 Enterprise with the 6K camera, so you can see see the 6k camera on there right and what we're going to do tonight is don is going to change out the payload so something important to note here is autel did a fantastic job uh, on on this system right here this product line in that in this small platform you're still able to change the payload. You're able to reuse the payload. So if you, if your agency bought the Evo 2 Dual, you can take the thermal camera off it. You don't have to repay for that. You can take the thermal camera off it. And if you wanted to upgrade to the Enterprise for the improved performance and that, that new um, smart controller, you can do that and you can carry your payload over to the, to the Evo 2 Enterprise, all right? So again, the purpose of tonight is to just see how long it takes, but more importantly, if your agency chooses to do this and to upgrade to the uh, Evo 2 Enterprise, you can buy this unit and using this tutorial, watching Don do this uh, change, you'll be able to do this as well. Now, just a couple of things before he gets started is you're gonna kind of wanna have set your environment. You don't really necessarily wanna do this out in a grassy field or anything like that. It's not that it's that hard, but there's little tiny screws and stuff like that. So you're gonna wanna be on a, on a table, like a wooden table. And then you can see Don has a good silicone mat here um, so that he's not damaging anything and, and you know help him with keeping any of the little screws rolling away. Just a good solid surface. Um, and, and one of the things that Don pointed out is you really want to the best of your ability to have an anti-static environment because you are dealing with electronics, all right? You can see there, Don, you know, if you saw on Don's wrist, he has an anti-static uh, wristband on there that keeps any kind of uh, shock coming off of his fingers and onto electronics, all right? So Don, why don't you first explain uh, what kind of tools that you're gonna use here? Sure, so these are just tools that you can buy off Amazon. I bought these off Amazon for about 27 bucks, so basically about 30 bucks. And it comes with, and I'll kind of show you the tools. It comes with all these bits. Um, there's some other stuff that comes with, some spades. But primarily is, the, is your screwdriver, your tweezers, and your spade. And those are the real of the tools that we're going to be using today is the, the tweezers. So the tweezers that he has are just some, pla they have some plastic tip on them. Plastic tip. The spade, it just it's just a, like a metal, it looks like a little pointed metal scraper, but it's really more of just something you can, so you aren't using your fingernails. Um, and, and that's just what it looks like. And then what are the, so this is just the driver for the torques. And then what size bits do we need? So there's two bits you're going to need for this. It's going to be the torque six. Um, let me get the right one. Torque six bit. So a number six torques which is commonly known as your hex, or actually, no, this is a little pointy, it looks like a star. And then and a this one Phillips is a double, a double lot Phillips, meaning it's a little tiny pointed Phillips, and then this goes in your driver. Now, uh, Don got this particular kit off of Amazon, and we'll put a link to the kit, the kit exact kit he's using uh, down in, in the description, so you can get the exact one that he's using. So, um, all right, Don, the other thing we're gonna do is just to get a data point is from the time that he actually starts, we're gonna put a stopwatch on it so we can see how long this actually takes. So if you were out in the field and you were gonna actually do this out, out there and try to do that, or if you just need to know how long would it take me to switch between uh, payloads between one and the other, that's you'll, you'll have an idea of what kind of time. Okay, whenever you're ready. All right, so he's gonna start off with the Evo 2 Dual you guys can see that. So the first one I'm going to start with is going to be the Torx bit. I'm going to press start now. Okay. And so there's two screws right here on the top. Like I said, you want to make sure when you're pulling these off, it's real easy. Make sure when you put these things back on, you're not put, putting a whole lot of force. It doesn't really take a whole lot. You really kind of want two fingers tight when you're retightening these because they can strip. This is plastic and they can strip on you. 
So here I'm setting those aside so that I keep those out. Now, now we're gonna switch over to our double lock Phillips. And so there's two screws here and I'm gonna tilt this up a little bit for you. There's two screws. There's a there's a basically a retention plate here. There's two of these tiny little screws, and that's kind of about you tilt, about. tilt it up just a little bit more so they can see. So these two screws right here. Ah, uh, there you go. Okay. These two screws right here are very tiny. This is kind of why I'm saying it, you really want it, it, you really don't want to have this out in the field because losing these screws is really easy. And just to make sure you're seeing, it's not the one nothing that comes down these little dobs here. It's actually on this little silver shiny plate here. And there's two little tiny, tiny screws that you're going to remove. Okay. So I'm going to pull, basically just put my double lock Phillips there. And just a little bit of torque. And you'll see how tiny the screw is. I'll hold the screw up here with the tweezers. And you'll see exactly how tiny that screw is. Oops, let me see. It's not focusing on it. There we go. You got a little bitty screw. Got it. So I'm gonna set this here aside, put that down so that I don't lose that, and then I'll remove the other one. Okay. And this is where the tweezers really come in handy. If you get one that doesn't come up with the screwdriver, you can grab that screw. So he's grabbing, what he's doing is he's reaching there, he, that screw, fell off the screwdriver so he reached in there and got it with the tweezers okay i'm gonna i'm gonna zoom in on those little little bitty screws just so they can get an idea how small they are over there all right so the, you can see they're little bitty so right. so nice pulling that plate there's that little plate that we showed you just a minute ago You'll see there's a little, little pad on the bottom of that. Okay, so this will be important to know whenever you put it back together. There's a there's some little pad material. Flip it over the other side. And it's shiny on that side, and so there's a padding, and the padding goes down. Okay, so now we've got that off. Now, this is where your spade was going to come in handy. So you want to use... Okay. Tilt it up a little bit so they can see it. So here you see there's a ribbon cable. Um, that this is where your spade is going to come in handy. You really just kind of want to just take a little bit. You don't want to put a whole lot of force on this. You just want to kind of, kind of wedge it, just so you can get that, get that to come up. And we're very careful because and no, you don't want to use a pocket knife. No, you don't. Know, <laughs> sharp. <laughs> so you see here, I kind of wedged it on that one side, and I wedged it up off the side just to get that pop so that I don't damage any of those connectors. And you can see... And it comes out just like that. You can see that connector is very has a whole lot of little contacts and see, pins. See it right here? I don't know if you, if you, how, how much detail you can see on that. But that, let me zoom out just a little bit here so you can kind of see this. This has a whole bunch of little tiny micro connectors and that's what you're, what you're popping out. That's why you don't want to put anything sharp underneath there. But just like that, that gimbal is now out of there and off of there. Now, whenever you pulled it out, did you just kind of rotate it? It just kind of rotated out? Is that how that came yeah, out? Because it, it seems it, like so it, it just... just it literally just, from the front of the aircraft, it literally just rotates out that way. Okay. So here we'll set this aside. And then we're just going to repeat the same procedure for the Enterprise. So I'm literally just going to take it, do the same thing. And it's a rinse and repeat. So it's, it's built the same way um, on the gimbal, of course, because yes. they're replaceable, but it's it's nothing extra, nothing different. Nothing extra, nothing different. Okay. Move this just aside so I can move this back a little bit so you guys can see. So again, these two screws is that one and this one. Yep. The ones right in front of the sensors on that plastic is the first ones that come out. So again, I'm just gonna take this out. We take that out. We get those set. So now I'm gonna take this is where it goes back to the double watt Phillips, and again repeat the same procedure for the retention plate. Here's the screw. 
I think you can probably see why having a mat like that would be kind of helpful. Where'd you get that mat? Uh, this was also on Amazon. You can get okay. them. They, uh, most of your, your electronics hobbyists, and you can find these mats we'll, on Amazon. We'll put a link. We'll put a link on the description on that, too. So now, again, we're going to do the same thing. I've gotten the screws out. I'm going to take my tweezers, grab the retention plate. You got the plate out. Set that plate in a little bit here. And again, same, same thing as before. Take my spade, kind of work up one side. Be very careful about that data cable. Let's, you don't want to damage that. You see how I just kind of yeah, push no, it up and then no, off. no gorilla fingers on that. And then here again, we're just going to rotate this up and out. And that is it. Okay, so so just so you know, to take both of them apart, we're at six minutes and 25 seconds, okay? But again, we've been talking through this and going slow. But again, for your first time, you could plan on it taking this long. So again, this, the, the procedure for, to install it is pretty much the same. You'll see here, There's you'll see on this... In the front of this, there's two little holes here. Mm -hmm. And those correspond to two uh, round plastic contacts inside the Up airplane. in the front of it, okay. So yeah. you gotta line those. So you wanna make sure, all you really have to do is just kind of angle it down at, a, at about a 45 degree angle. And you just wanna kind of rock it forward and line it up. And you'll feel when that engages. So you have those two little lugs and they, they go into those two little recesses. Yes. And once that drops in, then you can, they'll just kind of rotate in after that. Yeah, the big thing is if it doesn't want to go, just just work it from side to side, kind of the way I did there. Don't force it. And then it'll settle, it'll settle down in there. Okay. Big thing is you want to make sure you engage those pins. Okay, so now, so okay, so once you get in there, just kind of settled into the right position. Okay. Now um, comes the tricky spot if you can rotate it what you're showing them here so the tricky part the tricky part on this one is just making sure that you connect this data cable up correctly so what we this he's using that spade and what he's doing is just applying a light amount of pressure uh, back and forth across that plate and it was he's got to kind of hold it down with one side on the finger And you'll hear a little bit of a, when you, when you engage, you'll kind of feel it. You'll kind of feel it settle. Mm -hmm. And then when you give it just a slight bit of pressure, you'll hear a, kind of almost like a little bit of a snap. I know you, his fingers were in the way because it was real small. You couldn't see it. But what, what he, what he basically did is just took an applied pressure back and forth across that little plate. Let me zoom in so you can see exactly how that plate sits in there again. All right. So that little plate right there. You have, it has to just kind of seat down in there. But again, you want to use just light pressure. Don't force it. Nice light pressure. Once it's seated in, then then the hard part's over, right? The, or the, the the risky part, I guess you'd say. And all the while while I was doing that, I was using this spade to keep a little bit of a distance of that cable from, from office housing. So it was getting the proper alignment with okay. the contact. There you go. So I'm going to turn this back right back around here. And... So now, now is the reverse. Again, I'll take my, so what I'm really easy with, is I don't want to take my fingers and I just want to use my tweezers. And so then putting I'm that plate in with the pad drop down. that plate right in there and use that to kind of guide it and line up those holes. That plate and those holes are lining up. And hopefully you can see that. And so again, this is where these little tiny screws, just gonna line that up on the end of that bit, just like so. And it's a magnetic bit. So here I'm just gonna take it and then guide it down to the plate and give it. And when you tighten these, don't tighten them like the lug nuts on your car. It's just going to be a, a little two it's finger really snug. Just two finger snug. And that's and it. And stop. That's it. Again.
there's a, there's the tight. And then all I have all I need to do is then take. So here, after you're done with that, there's two. And I'll tilt this up. You'll see these posts. And if you can look down that a little bit, you can see that they're not exactly aligned. Um, so what you'll need to do is just take your fingers and feel them. You'll kind of push them just a little bit forward toward the toward this how to this orange housing. And you'll feel it settle. And once it's settled, it's in it's in position. Okay. So if you and you'll know if you didn't get that settled in the right place or if it didn't settle down or you forgot to do that when you try to put this this plate back on it will kind of set up like this because it's out of it because that that uh, is out of position and here i'm just going to go and again kind of get let's rip that out on did that off the wrong. So again, I put my bit down in here and I want to tighten again with two fingers. Two fingers tight. Top. No lug nuts. Yeah, because it's very easy, especially in this part, to strip, strip those screws out in that housing. Okay. And then good luck trying to get them out. So that's the, so just so you know, right now we're at 12 minutes to do the change out. You want to go ahead and power it on and test it with the. So first thing you can see the gimbal moving down there. It's powered it on. That means that the gimbal's getting power. Now we have the smart controller over here. So far so good. So here's the true test. There we go. And it's working. All right. So successful. And Don's done this a few times by now. And of course, we won't we won't uh, bore you with the other part, but you would just do the same process to put the 6K, 6K uh, sensor on your Evo 2, what, what was the Evo 2 dual. And now you effectively um, brought your, your dual camera over and put it on your new Evo 2 Enterprise and you're good to go. And again, the whole, whole test, we're at 13, 13 minutes. We've actually already been kind of done for a while, but 13 minutes or under, um, you can do the whole thing. And again, we were kind of babbling on and, and showing you repeatedly. If you had done this a few times, you could probably do it in, in six or seven minutes. But, you know, first time you can expect, uh, you know, 10 to 15 minutes would be a reasonable time to, to get it done. So anyway, um, hopefully this was informative and, and helpful. Uh, you can use it as a tutorial and for a data point. And uh, we'll talk to you later.